Hey y'all, Corey Congelio here, and I recently got together with the one and only Tim Pierce to shoot a few lesson videos. The one you're going to watch right now is about one of my favorite topics. It's about improvising on one string. And I really feel that it opens up scale playing for beginner, intermediate, and maybe even advanced students too. So sit back, enjoy this lesson, and stay tuned because you're probably going to see some more from Tim and I in the future. All right, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to Tim's channel as well as mine uh, for more content. Find us on Instagram, find us on Facebook, and say hey. All right, enjoy the lesson. Corey Congelio is not only a great guitar player, but he's also a great teacher, and he has the courses to back it up. There's a link below where you can access, through his website, all of his True Fire courses. I think he has 12 and another three on the way. So he's the real deal. This tip that he shares with us happens to be something that I use in my soloing all the time. He explains it very well. Also, there's a link below for the masterclass. We are up to over a thousand videos and over a hundred hours of lessons and content. <laughs> You have a theory uh, about a one string improvising you were telling yeah, me Yeah, it's kind of a good way to get a young improviser out of the weeds is what I like to say. Cool. Because what happens is a lot of this, the folks that I teach are beginner to intermediate blues players. Right. And even now I'm finding in Nashville some of the younger rock guys that maybe have grown up in church or you know something and playing praise and worship mm -hmm. music get stuck into the pattern playing which we all do because yeah. stuff just sounds great you know um look angus is great and angus plays in patterns but angus also goes this way okay up the guitar so if you if you know uh, your five mm -hmm. pentatonic patterns like and i'll just play to them sort of at a medium tempo okay so everybody knows that too Three, four, five, and then of course back to one. Okay. So everybody got it. We have that, right? If you're into improvising, yeah. you probably learned that. But so I get students that say, "Well, I know all this stuff. I just don't know how to, you know, what will happen is we'll play a blues track, and so maybe maybe we'll play a blues. Just sure. just give me a blues name, and they'll go." And they'll say, and like, okay, that's cool, but I'm losing a lot of ground here. I can't connect these patterns. Right. So I make him break it way down. And and truth be told, I think I might have stolen this years and years ago from Lee Rittenauer, but okay. I'm the only other person other than him that has seen this taught. Okay. And if it's good enough for Lee, it's good enough for me. Um, so play that blues again for me, if you don't mind. And I'm going to just take the second string, and I'm going to connect every note in those patterns. And it's going to develop licks. second. You're demonstrating something. So, would it be accurate? Okay, so if I'm on the B string. So, am I doing it? Yeah, totally. You know, and then what you can do is once you, 
now it's not always going to sound musical, you know, because this is a this is a fact finding expedition. Okay. What we're trying to do, we're yeah. trying to find our way through the roadmap a different yeah. way. You know, we've yeah. had this roadmap of five pentatonics forever, right. and this is this is the same stuff, the same notes, but it's connecting them in a different way. And it's kind of perhaps how a young improviser can start to play a little bit more lyrically or melodically, because this. <laughs> As opposed to, you know. Just by nature of staying on one string and traveling up and down the neck this way, I play more melodically. And then, sometimes I look at it like I'm on a train or on a subway, and every stop is a station where I can hop off and explore the neighborhood. So, if this is the train line, I stop there, I explore the neighborhood. Hop back on the train, explore the neighborhood. Hop back on the train, skip a bunch of stop, check out the neighborhood. It's obvious, like, you know, uh, the blues or fusion-y kind of cats, you know, Robin is, is a huge influence, Larry Carlton, Scott yeah, Anderson, all right. that, Lee Rittner. Yeah. They would always do that, you yeah, know, and, right. and I, I think yeah. it's, um, some, someone once told me that it's uh, a little more piano-like to play that way, you know. Yeah. So you can add, start to add string groups, then you do strings two, one and two, okay. strings two and three, strings three and four, so you can go... This is just fact finding. I'm not going to play a really solo cool. like that, but, but it's no, a way to kind of connect you, the dots, yeah. literally and figuratively. <laughs> the thing about it for me that's really profound is that you can make a choice to use your, your third, usually for me it's the third finger or the index finger that makes the traveling thing. Yeah. yeah. Or even a little different sound too. I mean, all those things right. Are, right. are really, they add to the equation. Yeah. You know, everything adds up to your musical kind of sentence that you're creating. Yeah, so what you're talking about is in the middle of a phrase, you can change mm -hmm. your hand position by focusing on one string and getting out of the horizontal boxes and just going vertical up and down the neck. I do that all the time, and with me, it's yeah. usually leading with my third finger or bringing up the back with right. my index finger. More attitude. And that's something you could practice. Yep. And lastly, totally. I came up with my third. So totally. you get you get like you know a whole step below and a whole step above just by leading. Yeah, you can go anywhere. And right. it's usually in the middle of a phrase, so the audience, nobody, if you close your eyes, you don't know. You, you, uh, no, you're traveling absolutely. everywhere. You know? Absolutely, and I think one of the things that's real valuable about your channel and your information is that you deliver it in a very palatable way. I've been told that I do that too because sure, we're absolutely. trying to get people to yeah. get this instrument in their hands and create the musical expression they, they want. Yeah. Whether it's copying their favorite people or yeah. creating something entirely new. Yeah. And that's what little tips like this yeah. I think are really good for because if you try to learn guitar from all of the, the litany of information that's out there, you're going to get overwhelmed. So trying to find these little things that help propel you down the path is really what I look for and the way I try to teach. Well, yeah, and what I stress to people is, who get frustrated, guitar is an instrument that you can, if you stay within your limitations, you can still be as expressive as anybody in the world. So maybe when you practice, you want to go, but when you go out and play live, maybe you don't feel comfortable doing that. You're just as effective going. So I practice yeah. like two modes. When you're working and stretching, Make the mistakes. Do yeah. all the awkward stuff. Do the strange stuff. And find the weird spots and, and hit the wrong notes, yeah. like I did. Yeah. You know, and and, and yeah. muscle through it. But know? the way to have fun when you're when you're performing is to kind of stay within. 
yeah. comfortable parameters and be Keith Richards or be, yeah. you know, it's good enough for him. It's good enough Paul for him. Kossoff or be yeah. Angus. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, simple is okay. And think about that, you know. He's making his way up, but you had something else I wanted to touch on where you notice when we were playing the blues and I was doing that. So so let's start that again. Yeah. I didn't play a lick now. Maybe a lick. So the idea is that you can kind of do all that stuff to kind of say, hey Tim, how's it going? You having a good day today? Boom, then your lick comes out. And that's the phrase that everybody goes, wow, that was really cool. Because a lot of times what will happen is a student will learn. And then they'll play that over the whole blues as, a, as an exercise or how to practice, which is cool because you have to know how to fit tab A into slot B. But what do you do in between that? You do this. You know. Then you hit him with that, and then yeah. then it's really the thing that you go, wow, I dug that. Yeah, one of the things I teach is that I combine three things. Nursery rhymes, simple melodies. Mm -hmm. If I go, consider that as simple as a nursery rhyme. And that's an effective thing to do while you're playing. You combine that with pieces of chords. Okay, so that's a piece of an A chord, right? arpeggio. Combine that with a blues lick that's just part of your vocabulary. So if you go f between those three things, your solo will have lots of different colors to it. Yeah. And you've it's pretty much, what you're saying. It's, it's yeah. pretty much described yeah. how I play. <laughs>